welcome to the last presentation for today. We are going to talk about uh, mobile application security testing, a few techniques in the next 40 minutes accompanied with multiple demos. So let's get started without taking further time. So agenda for today begins with uh, introduction to mobile applications. We talk about the security testing aspects of two primary type of mobile applications. One is the browser based mobile application, the other installable mobile applications. The browser based mobile applications, they don't have any installed components onto the desktop and are accessed just like web applications. The installable mobile applications have installed components and they are just like any other ordinary desktop applications. They leave a fingerprint on the mobile application memory. So as security professionals, we all know that it is very important for any security assessment involving client and server communication that the traffic be intercepted, modified, viewed and analyzed. So we look at the few techniques. Uh, we have actually configured two mobile phones to do the applic uh, intercept application traffic. We also look at various traffic interception schemes which can be employed depending on the hardware or the software you have at your disposal. And things get really tricky when mobile traffic is to be routed over SSL and uh, I will also share a very interesting uh, personal experience which I had today while working on my demo in the hall behind us. <laughs> all right, so all this, uh, I promise you that as we move ahead, the demos might get interesting. Uh, the initial one slide might sign, uh, sound lame, but as we move ahead, you might get more interested in theory demonstrations. We'll try to make a meaningful conclusion as well. So introduction, I don't think there's any need to say here except uh, I work on web applications, network assessments, mobile application security, uh, do some research, write exploits. Uh, Part-time VS developer, I do it uh, like like small small applications for my own use and uh, Ruby programmer. So moving ahead, uh, why are mobile applications critical? Why are we really looking at mobile application security today? Because, for example, there are 500 million mobile users in India at this moment. So that's close to, I mean, this number, and the penetration is really extreme as compared to inter internet penetration in our country. You can imagine, I mean, 500 million means every one in two person has a mobile phone. And with the cost of these devices going down, more and more people have access to smart or more technologically advanced phones. These two things are basically driving to, um, providing a tremendous growth in consumer and mobile application, uh, consumer and business mobile applications. So when you have tremendous growth opportunity, such a large market, what happens? Many new players come in. And when many new players are coming in, everybody wants to take advantage of being an early mover. This all leads to a faster development cycle and the security aspects might get overlooked. So let's look at the browser-based mobile applications. So what are browser-based mobile applications? These are the applications which are specifically designed to work only on mobile phone browsers. When, when these applications, uh, when you try to access these applications from your desktop browser, what happens is the web server actually looks at few headers in the request and either redirects you to the website intended for desktop, uh, desktop or it gives you an error message as we can see in the demonstrations that follow. Uh, the user agent header is one header which uh, most of the browsers send across even the automated libraries like libwhisker or uh, mechanize which come with ruby, libwhisker with Perl. These also send a user agent by default with every request they send out. So web servers basically read this user agent header. They see, okay, so this is a computer. Uh, it's a Windows XP machine, it's a Linux machine, and this is the browser. Okay, so I won't serve him the content intended for mobile app, the mobile device. What we can primarily do is when we are requesting for in these applications, we can change the user agent with multiple techniques. Either we can use a web proxy, intercept the traffic, uh, or we can use a few headers which are provided with various uh, browsers like Firefox. So we'll look at 
the user agent header and how it really helps us. Sometimes when we want to test the mobile application from a desktop, why would we do this? Because if we want to test everything from a mobile phone, suppose you are doing data validation, if you are doing this from a mobile phone, would you be able to configure a proxy? It's very, very hard. And what kind of time you are going to spend typing on those small keys? So let's take a look at uh, Firefox and see a few examples how they help us. We will try to access uh, Google's mobile uh, mobile portal and of google.com. So let's see what what comes up. Guys, are we having some issues with the internet? Or? All right. So we can say we can see that the user browser has been redirected to uh, the page which is intended for a desktop user. Now I'll just switch on a live HTTP headers. Uh, which will capture various headers which are going as request and response. It will help us see what really is going to the server in the back end. And we have a default user agent. I have configured two agents for us. One is for E61 smartphone and the other is Nokia 6212 which is an S40 series phone. I will show you how it looks like. Uh, E6212, so you can see the user agent header provided here. This is, we will select one of, uh, for one access we will select this. For the other access we will select for E61i. For the, Excuse me, visible This is more text, you can't be the video on the screen. Okay, uh, let me try to bring down the resolution of my laptop. My, maybe that might help. phones. So this is where we land up. So uh, the web server has seen the user agent and rendered a new content accordingly. Now uh, we'll just look at one more browser, Nokia 6212, which is an X S40 series phone. Another content. So we just saw three different types of devices: desktop, uh, E61i, and E6212. Three different types of content served. So, and if you want to check the headers, uh, here they are. I mean, yeah, so here you can see it is Nokia 61i, Symbian OS, 60, Series 60, Profile MIDP 2.0. Okay, another header which websites often use uh, to decide the content rendering is. The, uh, it is called the accept header. So the accept header, what it does is, is tells so the web server, okay, this is the content I can understand. And the, if the web server sees that, okay, this browser can understand WML, it means it can render my content. And WML is primarily used by mobile browsers to view and render the content. I'll just uh, give a brief of one more website. This is one of uh, a new new service providers. 
which has come into our market, you will see that when I try to access this web application from browser, now this web application is intended only for mobile phones. So when I access it from this browser, it says, sorry, your IP is blocked for security reasons. But we'll soon see there are no security reasons. It's just that the web server wants to render content only to those browsers which are able to understand WML. Again, there's a beautiful add-on for Firefox, which is WML browser. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to say, okay, tell the websites that the browser understands WML. This is the protocol. So it will add a header vnd.wap.wml to the end of accept data. So we'll just access this website again. So we have a login page now. So testing is far more easier when you do this and um, you can really be a lot more effective run, uh, run your automated tools, run custom tools, anything you like. <coughs> oh, this is about browser-based mobile applications. We move on to the next class of applications which is installable mobile applications. Primarily, you would see these applications coming in as Java applications or midlets for mobile phones. These applications leave a fingerprint, they have their own components on the mobile phone. There are a few reasons why we would want to see what gets installed onto the mobile phone. Yes? Uh, pardon, can you please come again? Do we need to provide the MSI and we can along with the header No, we don't need to do that. <coughs> some, okay, uh, this is a very typical example. What happens is, some service providers, uh, they have applications configured to work only in their own internal network. Alright, so what when you access the internet using their mobile device, they send this information internally. And uh, in turn, uh, this information is validated and response is given back. If you are an external user trying to access their internal website, number one, you will not have access. Number two, even if you have, this information will not be forwarded to the last uh, authenticating device, which will decide that if I want to render this content to this person or not. So we install, uh, we analyze application fingerprint because Number one, uh, there might be some components which we will be able to reverse engineer and create our own client which will help us test better. Number two, not a lot of care is being taken uh, for developing mobile applications because the memory of a mobile phone is generally considered secure. <coughs> if you have to access the inside memory of the mobile application, either you have to root the phone or you should be able to uh, this the right, uh, or the users have external memory to which the phone provides access. For S40 series phones, these are the phones, uh, the web app, uh, sorry, Nokia does not provide any interface or free access to the internal memory of this phone. So there are areas which you won't be able to venture into. It's always advisable to have phones which have external memory and install application in, in that memory. So we'll analyze fingerprint of a of Gmail application which I installed on this phone. What I'm going to do is this. One, I'm going to generate an MD5 hash of entire file system on the phone. Uh, that won't be time consuming because I want to create it uh, or list it down the directories which of, are of interest when you uh, install applications on the mobile phone. These are the directories in which the files generally get created. So uh, the number one, we'll calculate MD5 of all the files. Then uh, we will make some changes to the application. We'll like install the application. We'll uh, download the email. Then we will recalculate MD5 of all the files and compare the two files. How does it benefit us? 